everybody. This is Daniel Green with watersparkplugs.com. I thought I'd take this opportunity to address some frequently asked questions that we receive quite often. So what is a water spark plug? How does it work? A water spark plug is essentially a little electrolysis device that takes the place of your spark plug. And it converts water into the two gaseous fuels that water is made of. See, a lot of people don't realize that they're already using hydrogen as fuel in their gasoline engines. Gasoline is a hydrocarbon, meaning we're using hydrogen and expelling carbon as exhaust. When we use water as fuel, you're consuming the hydrogen within water and the oxygen, actually, and your byproduct is just water vapor. How much is this going to cost? <laughs> Uh, we anticipate two to three thousand dollars per vehicle installed by our authorized trained technicians. That way, we can offer a warranty on these spark plugs because these are highly advanced circuitry. So, if they're not installed the right way, it's like installing a car stereo. You can blow fuses and mess things up. So, we want to be able to provide a warranty with these installations. So, we hope to have distributors around the world that are licensed to install our product which should be around two to three thousand dollars per installation depending on how many cylinder heads are on your vehicle. So how exactly does one of these water spark plugs work? Well the water spark plug basically takes water and disassociates the water inside of the spark plug creating an ionized HHO fuel mixture that is then dispersed in the combustion chamber and ignited by lasers. There are several different actions that take place within the spark plug for this to happen three separate chambers. The first one is called the steam resonator. This takes water that's coming from your gas tank now and turns it into fog. It's a fog machine. We're making tiny fog-like droplets and those are being sent to the second chamber where those tiny fog water droplets are being hit with resonant frequency and that's separating water into hydrogen and oxygen. Now when this happens, water its mass expands 18,000 times when you turn water into its gaseous state. So that, that pressure is, is created naturally by performing this action. So that ionized HHO mixture is sent to the third chamber. Now in the third chamber of the spark plug, this ionized HHO is mixed with non-combustible exhaust gases and then stripped of its electrons. Now you have in the third chamber a positively charged HHO fuel mixture that is being dispersed and ignited by lasers. Another question might be, well, wow, do we even have enough water to be using water as fuel? Well, sure we do. Currently we're using millions of gallons of water in each coal-fired power plant. Each one. There's over 1,500 on mainland USA, so that's, do the math, we're talking trillions of gallons of water on a daily basis being sucked from our aquifers and rivers and streams just to cool coal-fired power plants. That's not even to mention nuclear or how much water it takes to refine oil or that tar sand project in Canada. We're talking trillions and trillions of gallons of fresh water we're wasting right now. So if we actually use the atomic energy within water, we would reduce water consumption for power generation or fueling by 100%. Um, there is enough moisture in the atmosphere, no matter where you are on the planet, to power your, your home and your car and more importantly provide clean drinking water for your body. Uh, the, the misconception that there's not enough water, food, or there's not enough anything on this planet is about control. There are people uh, you might be aware of who keep us in control, and free energy is not kosher just for that reason. So I'm, uh, I'm for one, I'm tired of it, and, and I think we should all have access to the same technology that's being used in NASA right now. Did you know that the space station's being ran by water? They've created an atmosphere in the space station, so they use the water cycle as a power source condense the moisture in the atmosphere, use that distilled water, separate the water through electrolysis, use the hydrogen to fuel a hydrogen fuel cell. The byproduct is water vapor again. It's a complete cycle. That same cycle, that same water cycle can be utilized by everybody here on Earth. We all have access to this technology. We should anyway. That's our goal here at Mr. Green Energy and at watersparkplugs.com is to bring you
types of free energy technology that weans us off of fossil fuels. That's our goal. Has this actually been done before? It has. Uh, there are a couple inventors that have water spark plug patents. Uh, Stanley Meyer is, is uh, one inventor that most people have heard of. Uh, in the late 90s, he was able to run his dune buggy on, on pure water. And uh, essentially, we've just taken what what he's done and improved the, the technology by combining what Ford and Autolite spark plugs and several other companies are making laser spark plugs. The spark plug hadn't changed in 125 years, so it's time we upgraded the uh, mechanism we use to ignite fuel in our cars. Oh. And several companies have seen the uh, benefits of using lasers to ignite the fuel because they require less energy than the traditional plasma arc that is used currently. What are the miles per gallon you get on a vehicle powered like this? Oh, great question. Um, Stanley Meyer uh, was once quoted with his spark plug design that you can drive from L.A. Uh, to New York on 22 gallons of water. We, we anticipate about the same miles per gallon with our spark plugs because our, our design is very similar. Another question might be, do they work on diesels? Um, unfortunately not. These spark plugs were designed to retrofit into gasoline ignition systems. So why don't we have this technology now? Uh, politics and economics. There are uh, a few people that are in power that like to keep the rest of us controlled through oil, gasoline, fuel, water. You know, these are all things that they want us to believe there are shortages of. It's just not true. There is an overabundance of water and clean energy for everybody. But we've been acclimated to a system that's antiquated. And now's the time to, to build a new system because the old one's obsolete. We sure would love the support. You know, uh, people like to be anti something, but we really need people out there that are for pro something. You know, if the pro-free energy movement had just as, as much support as the anti-GMO movement, wow, we'd all be set right now. We'd all have free energy if we had that kind of, of excitement and backing behind our movement. So please consider getting behind free energy because if you do, GMOs and chemtrails and poisonous vaccines, all that stuff goes by the wayside because we stop funding the people that are causing it. Hope you see what I'm saying, and please share this message. We want to try to do something, and do something quickly. So. so what is it that your company needs in order to make this technology available to the public as soon as possible? This is huge. Mainly, we need public awareness. We need more people to realize that this is a valid technology that we're all being denied. Uh, until that happens, until we turn off the, the, the TV and the mindless programming, um, until we wake up to the, the reality that we can have, that's mainly what we need. But as far as financing goes, we need 600000 right now to make our prototypes. We have a, a facility in Canada that specializes in making nano-sized uh, circuitry. Wow. And they have agreed to make our spark plugs, and they have the ability to manufacture them as well. So. Right now, we're offering 20% of our company in trade for $600,000 of startup capital. But everywhere I go, I see people on the greed. Little do they know, it's the giving they be needing. I tell you, you, yeah. I'm giving a giving it, I'm giving a giving it, I'm giving a giving it all.